This power plant from 2015 is no longer producing any electricity, while it had cost $3.8 billion to build. When you think of failed infrastructure projects in Germany, you might think of the 10-year delayed BER airport in Berlin, the new Stuttgart 21 train station or the Elbphilharmonie in Hamburg. But all of these projects inherently benefit citizens for decades to come. What if there is a gigantic failed project that is even harmful for locals, people worldwide and the environment. Then let me introduce you to the Moburg power plant in Hamburg, Germany. This is a story of how politicians and a large corporation overestimated themselves, how locals, environmentalists and the EU opposed the ideas and how Hamburg still ended up with this 350,000 square meter concrete wasteland that is no longer in operation. But this area also holds a possible green future that could change the emissions footprint of the port and also the way we heat our homes. Alright, let's start from the beginning. Since the 1990s, decision makers have observed the ever-increasing energy consumption of the city of Hamburg, especially of the port and industry. Historically, there have been three major power stations near Hamburg, two coal-fired plants west and east of the city and a 1000 megawatt gas-fired plant in the south. The plan was to build a new coal-fired plant at this location to replace the old costly plant. Demolition of the old plant began in 2004 and Vattenfall began planning a replacement with an initial cost estimate of 700 million euros. Spoilers, it will be much more. In 2005, the Hamburg Senate, which by the way was governed entirely by the conservative CDU, asked Vattenfall to double the power output. New cost estimate 2.6 billion euros. Hamburg wanted to completely replace the 40 year old power plant in Wedel. The only problem is that it provides district heating for a large part of western Hamburg. This means that heat pipes carry hot water directly from the power station to various houses that in turn do not need to maintain their own heaters. To connect Moorburg in the south of the city, a large tunnel would need to be dug underneath the deep Elbe river. However, multiple environmental organizations did not approve of building such a gigantic plant in the middle of the city, while climate change is already getting a big issue. By 2007 there were over 1700 official complaints and more than 12,000 signatures from locals against the project. Needless to say, this was ignored by the former conservative mayor Olaf von Beust and he even pushed for an early start of construction in 2007 when permits were still missing. Instead of one, the new plan is for two burning blocks of 865 megawatts each. To put that into perspective, at full capacity these two combined can supply almost the entire city with its nearly 2 million inhabitants and heavy industry. In the following years, the Green Party tried to stop the construction but was eventually legally forced to sign it off, but of course with significant delays and costs. Fast forward to 2012, most of the power plant is built and should be operational this year. However, there seem to be significant flaws in the wells. July 2013, the boiler is fired for the first time and a black cloud passes over the nearby residential areas. While some residents complain of headaches and breathing difficulties, Vattenfall assures that there are no health risks associated with this. That same year, the cooling tower was found to be infested with Legionella. In December, the steel boiler was found to be structurally flawed and about 10% of the steel had to be replaced. Several disputes with the Green Party over stricter environment regulations later, the first operation began on the 28th of February in 2015. In March, the EU Commission sued Germany for failing to comply with environmental regulations on cooling, but still on the 31st of August, Olaf Scholz, former mayor and now Chancellor of Germany, proudly hosted an official festive opening for the power plant. This is, by the way, the same year as the Paris Agreement, but no further comment. At full capacity, the power plant can produce 1730 megawatts, which requires burning 12,000 metric tons of coal per day, or about 4 million tons per year. In total, this would emit a staggering 8.7 million tons of CO2 per year, increasing Hamburg's carbon footprint by more than 50% and making it one of Europe's top 30 carbon emitters. For reference, you could drive a car for about 45 billion kilometers, or in other words, this is the same footprint as more than 10% of all vehicles in the whole European Union. But one piece of good news, the entire construction was paid entirely privately by Vattenfall and costed around 3 billion euros or 
3.8 billion dollars at that time. Large investments were made in carbon capture technology, which never worked profitably, and in heat converters for district heating, which was also never finished. However, the plant continued to produce electricity for some years. In 2017, Germany was found guilty in the case of the EU Commission. See, since then the power plant worked in the following way. There's excess steam after going through the turbines, this needs to be converted back into water. Therefore, the power plant pumped water out of the river, which requires enormous amounts of water, and the hot water is going back into the river. This in turn increases the water temperature, which disrupts the river's climate and can harm plants and animals. The EU has ruled that these environmental impacts have not been properly examined. Now the power plant is only allowed to use closed circuit cooling with the cooling tower. This works by spraying the hot water inside the cooling tower and blowing cold air from below, causing the water to cool and fall and the hot air to escape through the top. This is much better for the surrounding environment, but comes at a much higher cost. The plant also never reached full capacity. Who could have known that it's not smart to build an oversized power plant while Germany is phasing out coal? In the five years, from 2015 to 2020, 34,288 terawatt hours were provided. It should have been 11.5 terawatts hour per year, about 60% more. In 2020, Germany finally decided to phase out coal completely and by 2038, all coal plants must shut down. The state has reserved a total of 40 billion euros for compensation alone. Paradoxically, the power plants have to apply for this compensation and it's not the plant that emits the most CO2 or is the least efficient that has to shut down first. No, it will be the one that wants the least compensation. And so it happens that one of the most efficient newest power plants in Europe was shut down in July 2021 after only six years of operations. They probably just asked for the least compensation. Unfortunately, the exact figures are not known, but it will probably not be much if Vattenfall continues to operate at a loss otherwise. Now, was it a good decision to shut down? Financially, yes. For the air quality of Hamburg, also yes. For reductions of emissions, Germany and worldwide, and facing the energy crisis following the Ukraine war? Absolutely not. The electricity that is now missing from the Moburg plant has to be produced somewhere else. Of course, Germany has the highest share of renewable energy ever, but the reality is that older, far more inefficient power plants had to produce more as a result and could not be shut down. For example, 10 kilometers away is the completely run-down Wedel coal-fired power plant in 1961, which was supposed to be replaced by Moburg. In 2019 it consumed 475,000 tons of coal per year and emitted around 1.1 million tons of CO2. And it will not be easy to shut down as it still supplies about 420 megawatts of thermal energy for the west of Hamburg and only 250 megawatts of electricity. Since 2013, the city of Hamburg owns 100% of this power plant as well as the entire district heating network. So the city of Hamburg is tirelessly working on replacements and aims to shut down the plant in 2026 as well. As a first step, an 80 megawatt so-called power to heat plant was opened in Wedel in 2023. This is basically just a big boiler that converts excess wind energy from the north into heat for Hamburg. Additionally, a heating tunnel is actually built under the Abel now. However, this will connect the residential areas with the industry to the south of Hamburg, such as steel and aluminum plants, waste recycling plants or a sewage treatment plant. The excess energy from these processes can then be used to heat homes. What will happen to the shutdown Mowak plant now? The Hamburg Energiewerke bought this decommissioned plant from Vattenfall in 2023. The plan is to open a green hydrogen hub here by 2026. In other words, 100 megawatts of wind and solar energy will be used to produce green hydrogen for the surrounding industry and transport sectors. A hydrogen network spanning the port aims to significantly reduce emissions in the port area. It will be interesting to see whether this will actually become a profitable reality and whether the Morbok site can still be put to good use. Until then, this concrete monstrosity will thrown as a disgrace over the city of Hamburg, reminding everyone of past mistakes.